one of the things I've always kind of not liked about the Mac OS is up in the top where it has the date and it shows like, you know, it's 11.29 uh, a.m. It tells you the day. It doesn't tell you the date. I'm thinking, oh, well, i got to sign something here. What's the date? It's today the 12th, the 13th. What is it? And you look up here and you don't know, and so you have to come up here and you click. So you have to click on it in order to see what the date is. And you see that, ah, it is September 13th. Now you know when I shot the video. Um, but you can make that automatically be up there now. I used to install a plugin called W Clock uh, for previous versions of the Mac OS that allowed me to, to have the date up there. But now I can go to Date and Time Preferences. And by the way, Oh, by the way, one other thing it did add was to be able to set time zone automatically using current location. So, and that's kind of nice if you have a laptop and you do a lot of traveling, you're going from east coast to west coast, it'll automatically check whatever your internet connection is and it'll automatically update your time zone as soon as it gets an internet connection in your new city, your new destination. But you come over here to clock, the clock tab, and down here there's an option to show date. And now it shows me up here in the top, Sunday, September 13th, and that's very handy for me to be able to find out that sort of information. I want to also talk to you about something else that's in System Preferences. Now this date and time is a System Preference. I'm going to just click on Show All. One of the things that changed in Snow Leopard was that you now have a language and text, where you used to have a foreign, uh, it was used to have international palette, and, that, and a lot of that content is still there. To where you click on that, and you have your languages, so you can choose which language you prefer. If you want it in French, you can pop it over into French or German, things like that. Um, and so that's still there. You've also got text, and this is a neat little thing that they've added in. This is where you can automatically have it in, in system wide through different applications on the Mac OS. It'll automatically substitute for you. So if I put in parentheses C parentheses, it'll automatically convert it. Let me show you. Let me open a text document here and open, uh, let me see, a new one. Actually, I'll just take this one that I've got right here. I'm just going to go ahead and type in parentheses C parentheses return. It automatically converted it to the copyright symbol for me. So if you like that, then leave that checked. If you don't, uncheck it. You know, and I hate the how much space one slash two takes. If I turn this on, let me show you first of all. If I come in here and I go one slash two, that's one half. Okay? But if I come over here and I turn on this little feature, and then I come over here, and now when I type one slash two, it makes it into the one half symbol, which is a lot nicer uh, to be able to read. It takes up less space, it takes up the space of one character instead of two characters, which is nice. So you might like that little uh, ability to do that to, to kind of create. You can also put in a plus. And let's say you wanted to put in something. Like I often, you know, abbreviate Ask the Techies with um, Techies. I can type in that's replace anytime I write Techies with Ask the Techies. So that way it automatically puts out the full name of the show. And so I'm just click Tab again, and now it's logged in, and I can check it and turn it off. So I come into something like Text Edit, or if I go into something like um, uh, Mail, Apple's Mail program, something like that. It'll automatically work. Watch. Here we go. I'm going to type in Techies is a show where you see how it automatically changed Ask the Techies, changed Techies into Ask the Techies. You can do the same thing. If you get tired of always signing your name or something like that, you can come in here and you can just put in your initials. And then I want it to actually spell out Dealey Beard. Hit tab. Come back over here to something. You go into, you can, and this is great for mail more so than you might do in text edit. But now I can type in stuff like uh, DLB. Um, is my name. Okay. And that saves me a lot of typing. So there's things you always have to type up, type out a lot of times. It, it can get kind of old. That can be really helpful to you. Um, so that's a neat little tip. Let me go ahead and just hide that for you. Um, you still have um, over here some different formats for dates and things and input sources. And by the way, if you're familiar with this, the keyboard and character viewer, if you don't have that checked, you might want to check that. Go to keyboard viewer. And now this little thing pops up, and this allows me to show the keyboard viewer. So I'm trying to remember again. And let me actually see if I can uh, stretch this open, make it a little bit bigger. But oftentimes I'm trying to figure out how do I uh, put that little accent mark over the E? Well, what I can do is I can hold down the Option key and see what pops up. And the ones that are highlighted orange show me the accents. And then all I have to do is type in, like for in this example, Option E. 
and then E, and it will actually type it in. Let me go back to text and show you. So I'm going to go over here. Let me just pull that out of the way. I'm going to go back to my little document that I was playing around with here. And if I wanted to type in, say, res, um, and I hold down option E, and then E, it puts that little uh, accent mark above the E for resume, which is kind of a neat little trick. So that's how you can have that up there. You can test it any time. Just close it out when you're done. Again, that's in the language and text, system preferences. Just click on that check check the keyboard and character viewer. Makes it really nice. It's also got a character viewer if you just wanted to, you know, f have a little certain punctuation or miscellaneous crosses. Let's say you wanted to put in a little snowman, you know, then you could just say uh, insert and uh, go over here. Go there. There, I went insert and it popped it in. So I'll go over to my document here, hit return. And I'm just going to type in, what else should it pop in there? Oh, what else can we find? Greek, digits, oh boy, Latin, accent, Latin, ah, miscellaneous. I'm going to do the snowman. Currency symbols, parentheses. How about currency symbols? Money is always nice, right? Uh, <laughs> actually, here's a braille pattern. Oh, this is interesting. Let's choose that one. Click insert, and now I have this braille pattern. Now, if it's too small for you, again, you can always come over here in something like text edit or whatever and, and do format and uh, font and say show fonts. And when you do that, then you can pull over this little menu. Let me go ahead and close this out. Then you can come over here and you can choose make it 18 or make it bigger. I want to make it 72. And now I have the big snowman there. And I have the braille, big braille marker as well right there. Okay. Now it doesn't actually print braille on your computer monitor but <laughs> or in your paper. But it can have that uh, show what it would be if you wanted to type something in braille. Or have a little cute little snowman uh, into your document. One thing I wanted to point out about text edit is that you can also choose to make something in all caps. For instance, up here at the top, I have this is my main document. I can highlight all of that, and then I can right click on it. I'm having trouble getting my right click to work on this pen device. There we go. So you right click on it, and you have things that you can do in here where you can do adjust the text, you know, spelling, grammar, substitutions, that sort of thing. You can also do transformations. You can make it all upper make it all uppercase, and now it's in all caps. I could have also right clicked and said transformations, make lowercase, or I could say capitalize. When I do capitalize, well, I only selected one word. Let me select the whole thing. And I think it happened again. Let me select all this and let me right click. I have a hard time getting my clicker to work for some reason. There we go. And shoot. Ah, well, if I had a real mouse, it'd probably work. Okay, there we go. Transformations. Anyway, you can do capitalize. It's not working with mine, but you can get the whole document to do it. I'm having trouble with my pen today. It's uh, giving me trouble. Just not my lucky day, I tell you. <laughs> anyway, let me just go ahead and close out of that. Uh, no, nah, don't save. <laughs> it's just a bunch of gibberish. <clears throat> now, one of the things I wanted to point out to you is um, expose.